Okay, so we got Wilmington, Delaware. You got a Democratic mayor. You've got a mayor and city council have said, yeah, we're not going to do the whole defunding of the police thing. That's not our gig. That's not our jam. Not doing that. So now you've got crime statistics. Delaware used to be with just a lot of poverty and some incredibly high crime statistics. And so we talk about crime levels in all cities rising during the pandemic, you had the courts closed. Nobody wanted to put prisoner people in jails because, you know, COVID's going to spread all of that stuff. And so we're finally getting to the point where we're seeing cities that didn't defund their police that have capability of doing adequate policing, meaning they've got the numbers to cover the area, whatever the area is. We're seeing those numbers come back on down. Because society's kind of going back to normal, right? It's trying to. One of the big things is people going back to work in the downtown. That's a big one that's happening right now. Not talking about that today. Well, we're going to talk through what a city like Delaware, why its numbers are declining and other areas. Oh, yeah. Still got that upward trajectory. Let's jump on into it. Violent crime decreases in Delaware City, whose mayor says he wouldn't even consider defunding the police. That's a lot like the city that I live in here. We've got a Democratic mayor. I know her. I've known her for through baseball, high school baseball. I mean, I know, you know, we, we, we talk and we see each other, say hi, that kind of thing. I never talk to her about politics. Just just not really, you know, hey, mayor, what's going on? But one of the things is, city here, Bellevue, even though you got a Democratic mayor, defunding the police is never on board. We had city council members from Bellevue going to the Antifa, going to the Black Lives Matter rallies. And some of those guys were pretty hardcore. Like I'm like, whoa, yowza, you're saying that to them. Okay. All right. You go, you big bad boy. (laughs) You know what I mean? This was in downtown Bellevue Park. I witnessed that go on. It's because there was big pushback to, we're not going to let you just run willy-nilly through our city. That's not happening. And man, there was a flotilla of cops when Black Lives Matter and Antifa would come to town because we got rocked one time, you know, uh, right after the George Floyd thing happened, our Bellevue Square got just rocked. And so the city said, yeah, we're not having that happen again. So anytime we'd have a protest, there would be, I don't know how many police cars, cops on bikes. I mean, they were just right up their rear end, right? I recorded a bunch of that stuff and there's some videos out there if you care. So violent crime in Wilmington Wilmington has fallen from last year's record high. And that is what we're seeing in areas that have normal policing levels that didn't defund their police, that didn't say, hey, you cops, you're terrible human beings. Look at George Floyd. You know, that whole thing. Crime has decreased since 2021 in Wilmington, Delaware, whose Democratic mayor is on record opposing any potential moves to defund the city police department. Back then in the summer of 2020, the summer of love, that was not, that was not a popular opinion. Everybody was on, and by everybody, I mean anybody slightly left of center was, ah, defund the police, greatest concept ever. Well, we've seen how that's played out and in reality, And it's, yeah, it's not been good. There's certainly been some people protesting police behavior. Reform, not defund, right? That's the thing. But across the board, we have one of the finest police departments in America. And as far as I'm concerned, Democratic Mayor Mike Perziski told Fox News Digital, regarding any murmurs of defunding the police in Delaware's largest city, Perziski said, not even a whimper. We wouldn't consider it. And that's where I think most adults in the room were. And by adults, I mean people that can kind of think through the implications of what that might look like. All right. So you're going to put those funds into community resources. Who's going to answer the 911 calls? Are you going to have social workers answer all those 911 calls? Because we don't have enough cops Even if you did have them do all that, we still don't have enough cops right now in Seattle or Portland or a lot of these other areas to to respond to basic 911 call. Don't have a response. I just finished a podcast down in uh, Portland where response time to some kids either flashing guns or whatever, brawling in high school, and they thought there might be a big event. Took the police 80 minutes to get to the high school. 
well, they're busy doing other stuff. You only got so many. That's how this goes. You'd love to have people, to res you know, Johnny on the spot, police response to everything. But it's a numbers game. You can only respond to so many when you don't have enough, you know, resources for said policing. Wilmington, which has historically had crime problems and was dubbed Murder Town USA in 2014, has seen a 50% reduction in murders compared to the record high in 2021. That's according to stats uh, from the Wilmington Police Department. There's also been a 25% reduction in shooting incidents and shooting victims and a 16% reduction in overall part one crime, such as murder, rape, robbery, aggravated assault, and felony theft. So your major crimes are going down in a city like this. And I think that's happening to a lot of cities across the United States. It's just that the majority of the press that you see is going to be, oh, this isn't good. This isn't good. Oh, these numbers are not good. And that's, that's not, you know, you're able to get a little bit of the mainstream media recognize that. But my mainstream media, a lot of the time is saying, nothing to see here. This, yeah, we're fine. It's kind of like Lori Lightfoot. Hey, don't, don't ignore all the murders that happened this weekend. We got a lot of good businesses coming into to Chicago and they're still staying here. I mean, you know, look at the numbers. You know, like I am looking at the numbers and these numbers are off the hook bad. How are you going to run for reelection? And she just, you know, blows past it and, ah, it's going to be great. It's going to be a big party. Przyski, the mayor of uh, Wilmington, attributed the decrease in part to community support for police. All right, there you go. There's your first clue. Noting how officers feel under siege in some other cities. Absolutely. We've talked about that a million times. I think generally speaking, the community is very supportive, he said. Community I'm in here, Bellevue, which might be a few miles away from Seattle, but has a wildly different view of policing. And it's, hey, we like police. They handle crime when it comes up. And when something bad happens to me, I want to be able to call 911 and have, you know, officer friendly show up <laughs> and take care of business, right? The police chief goes out and walks the neighborhood, as do I, and feel good about that dynamic. You wouldn't have that in Seattle. You wouldn't have that in Portland. They might get eliminated. Seattle, Better. It depends what area of town and what nut job happens to be walking the street that day. Because we got a lot of crazy homeless people running around out there, right? Anytime we have police misbehavior, the chief is pretty swift when it comes to weeding those people out. He said the Wilmington is largely free from the tension between police and the black community that exists in other places. People in our community are appreciative of the job police do. And that's one thing that I've had. I get so many comments, black conservative here. I think you're spot on on this issue. I think, you know, communities have reacted negatively to the police in some areas. And then in other areas, they're like, okay, we're, you know, we're working with our police. We're trying to make this happen. And leadership within the black community is like, yeah, don't, don't defund the police. That's not really where we want to be. Cause we know if that happens, that's going to impact our community directly. I get a lot of messages like that that leads me to believe, okay, you know, not everybody in these communities was on board with the whole defund the police thing. And the flip side is, the reasonable side is, yes, there are some issues with policing, always have been, probably always will be. That's kind of humanity. And so, you know, as long as a community takes care of those, and if there's a cop that gets out of line that does something, then you respond take care of the issue. That's kind of how this game is played, right? That's how this system should work. But when you don't have enough cops in general, that's what we're seeing on broad scale right now. At the end of 2019, crime started to spike. Okay, going up, this is the mayor, and we immediately went into the pandemic, which is something that was really catastrophic for us in cities across the country. It closed our courts. That's super important right there. He explained that courts could not process charges and that judges were loath to put people in prison where COVID was a serious problem. You can't do the social distancing thing, right? It's just not possible. You got thousands of, of people incarcerated in, in small proximity. And so they're like, okay, yeah, now you go free. You, you go down the street. Be a good person. Show up on your court date if you can. So, you know, the court system, our court system in Seattle had like 5,000 charges that were backed up, cases that were backed up, waiting for 
it's a Seattle City prosecutor to make a decision. And Seattle City prosecutor, Seattle City attorney has done a great job basically just going through and kind of systematically go, all right, we're going to go with this one, this one dismissed, just boom, banging them out and getting a response time that's more in line with something so you don't have all these cases back up and you get all these criminals just running around. I think all that was the, our system completely collapsed, he said. And we got through 2020 to the end of 2021. We started to get relief from the COVID restrictions and you saw the system start to work. I mean, courts went back. You've got you know, the, the motion of justice working again, whatever that might be. He also mentioned a bill passed by the Delaware General Assembly that raised bail for signal offenses. Okay, so you can see they're going in a different direction. And what happens when a city goes in a different direction that is more, you know, pro-police, pro-public safety, pro-law? Their crime stats are coming down, not going up. Judges have gotten much more serious about letting people out. And unfortunately, that's the short term solution right now, as you can have dangerous potential criminals walking around with firearms, which is so prevalent today. There you go, right? So here's a quote that I thought was super interesting. There's a lot of poverty in Wilmington and gang violence. Strict gun laws have not stopped the violence but in fact, make it harder for law-abiding citizens to protect themselves. Hmm. What do you think about that? That makes sense, right? Because oftentimes, how many times do you read a story where you've got um, you got somebody out on bail, or you got somebody that's had 45 felony convictions, 75 arrests over their last 25 years. They're out on bail. They're out on a thousand dollar bail that some, you know, fund covered. And when they do have an incident with gun violence, meaning they shoot somebody, it's with a stolen gun. It's with a stolen gun. How many times do I read that right here? A lot. So that's the deal. You make it harder for law-abiding citizens to protect themselves. What's going to happen? Only the criminals are going to have guns because they don't care. That's not, I mean, they, they, they're convicted felons. They can't have a gun anyway. But the system that they work within requires them to have firepower. And so you make it harder for the law-abiding citizens to have guns. You've made that equation unequal. And that's exactly what's going on. So this whole, you know, strict gun laws, that to me, and I'm reasonable, right? That to me, I, I'm not, hey, everybody should run out and buy a gun just because. If you feel you want a gun and you need a gun to protect yourself, I'm all for that. I, I think we have a right to that. Should we have a right to, you know, semi-automatic uh, assault guns? Mm, but where do you draw the line? You know, where do you draw the line? But law-abiding citizens, yes. And so how about increasing the penalties for felons with stolen guns. That's something that I've always thought of. Automatic, put them away, put them away. That's not really what we're doing right now, right? And so that's why you've got so many of these guys in in cities with, you know, approaches that are different than, than Wilmington. That's why you've got so much craziness going on because the criminals that are out there, they're just doing their thing. They're just doing their thing and they know they can get away with it. So we've had several years of that. Wilmington, starting to come back, starting to come back. Part of Wilmington problem lies in its proximity to violent cities such as Philadelphia and Baltimore. Mm, yeah, not good. The consequences of whom's crime policies spill over into the small state. It's a lot like Portland is spilling over into what used to be kind of the more normal, quieter, residential, suburban areas outside of Portland. That's you're getting that crime influence there. So, you know, all this stuff works together. All of these things work together. And yeah, here you are. So you've got cities that are on the comeback after the whole COVID thing. Then you've got other cities that are just mired down in what's been kind of an onslaught of crime and shootings and you know, stuff that we didn't see at this level is we haven't seen at these levels since, you know, either the late 80s, typically, or sometime in the 90s, when that gang violence was just absolutely raging. When I was in, you know, high school and, and um, 
and in college, you'd see, you know, all the stuff about the Crips and the Bloods down in LA. And you're like, wow, that is a war down there. So we're kind of back to that point where cities that haven't defunded their police like Wilmington are getting back on board. Their numbers are starting to level off. They're starting to come back down because they never really lost control of their general policing. We just had the, the COVID hit. And, you know, when you shut down your court system and you're not incarcerating anybody and you're not really arresting anybody, do you remember that? They didn't want to arrest anybody because, ah, that, that perpetrator might have COVID. Ugh, don't want to get it. Don't want to die. That whole thing. And then you had to defund the police. It was the perfect storm for crime to elevate in these areas that, you know, systematically said, nah, to fund the police, great concept. And just went down all these, you know, roads of basically impacting their public safety. Wilmington, making its way back. All right. And that's not to say Wilmington doesn't have its issues. All cities do, right? All big cities do. Y you can't avoid that. But some, a little bit more than others. All right. Thanks so much for being here. We'll catch up on the next one. Bye for now.